everyone, welcome to Outside Xbox, your watching show of the week. I'm Jane. And I'm Andy. This week I was delighted to see the announcement of the Turtle Beach Feed Bag, a bag you attach to your gaming headset and fill with snacks, something I've been doing for years. Finally, society has caught up. Oh no, Andy, did you, didn't you hear that was an April Fool's joke? Yeah. Uh, it's yes. not a thing. Yes, I did. Did you say you've been that. doing it for years? No. Wait, so is that what happened to my backpack that you said fell into a fast-flowing river? The important thing, Jane, is that you've been playing something this week. Oh, yeah. I expect. Yeah, yeah, I have. I've been playing Bullet Storm Full Clip Edition, which brings the acclaimed 2011 shooter to Xbox One and PS4 with prettier graphics, all its previous DLC, and a new game mode called Overkill, which, when you consider the level of overkill in the game already, is quite the claim. <laughs> If you missed Bulletstorm the first time around, it's a first-person shooter in which you play as intergalactic space jerk Grayson Hunt, who crash lands on a hostile planet and must fight his way through hordes of enemies to get his revenge on the man who betrayed him, in, it must be said, a very roundabout way that involves a lot of shouting about dicks. I will kill your dicks! What? What does that even mean? You're gonna kill my dick? I'll kill your dick! How about that, huh? Speaking of dick killing parties. What made Bulletstorm stand out, however, was the way that you play it. This is a shooter in which if you just shoot people, you're not doing it right. Thanks to a trick attack style system of skill shots, environmental kills, and traversal moves, Bulletstorm plays like a cross between Doom and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, as you string together brutal, hilarious, improbable kills, trying to maximise your points by both shooting someone in the crotch and booting them into a giant cactus. <laughs> This is amped up even further in the game's new overkill mode, which gives you full access to all the game's weapons and skill shots from Act 1. Also available as DLC is the ability to play through Bulletstorm as Duke Nukem, in Duke Nukem's Bulletstorm Tour mode, in which Duke Nukem takes Grayson's place in the gloriously stupid campaign and somehow manages to be even more of a jerk to people than Grayson is. God damn, what's wrong with your face? Bulletstorm is a brilliantly stupid, fun and inventive shooter that everyone should play at least once, and if you missed your chance first time around, Full Clip Edition is a great opportunity to rectify the wrongs of the past, such as the fact that you never killed a boss by shooting a flare up its backside. I mean, that's the kind of thing that'd haunt a person forever. And then what happens? And then I slid into the first guy, booted him into the sky, hit his mate with the energy leash, he went flying and they were all like, no! I have bullet storm. That was that one with the main characters, a total dick, right? Oh yeah, that doesn't really narrow it down, Mike. True, because although the character you play in a game is technically the hero, they frequently do anti-heroic things that would give even the villains pause. Like the following things, for example. The Ulysses. I'm getting us out of here. Warping to a dark matter field. Try and lay no, low until- we're not going anywhere. That's the Confederation's prize warbird. General Serrano will be on board. Bulletstorm hero Grayson Hunt is a stupid amoral space pirate, sure, but even stupid amoral space pirates would probably think twice about attacking a giant battlecruiser with their rinky-dink space barge, especially while drunk, and while everyone else disagrees with them. I honor my oath to serve you, despite your recklessness. But this, I will not die for your revenge, Gray. Our revenge. Still, Grayson has got many years of space piracy experience, and maybe Ishii is overreacting. Ishii? Okay, fine. We were all dead men anyway. Were we, Grey? Because I'm pretty sure that we'd have been fine if you hadn't attacked that enormous capital ship. Well, maybe some of the rest of the crew will survive if you hightail it out of there now, Grey? Grey? And a sudden plunge in the sullen swell. Ten fathoms deep on the road to hell. Okay, good chat. Hey, aren't you Weird Ed Edison, the paramilitary nut? Why, yes, I... Hey, do I know you? Yeah, I'm Bernard Benulli. I broke into your house five years ago, kidnapped your hamster, broke into your piggy bank. Hmm, nope, doesn't ring a bell. 
Weird Ed Edison first appeared in Maniac Mansion, in which he was a paramilitary nut who would kill you if you microwaved his hamster, which astonishingly was something you could do in Maniac Mansion. <laughs> Nice of him to get you a headstone, at least. By the time sequel Day of the Tentacle rolls around, Ed is in a much better place. He's calmed down, got a new hamster, and even taken up stamp collecting. I'm much better now. I don't have those... those bad thoughts anymore. Now I collect stamps. So naturally, the first thing Day of the Tentacle hero Bernard Bernoulli does when he comes across Ed in the game is ruin his beloved stamp book with ink. Neat, huh? Ah. Uh... <gasps> my Pony Express stamps. You'll ruin my Pony Express stamps. Not to mention five years of therapy. Get out of my room. It was only Invisible Ink, though, so while we did ruin five years of therapy and destroy Ed Edison's peaceful life, we did get our hands on this sweet stamp, which I think you'll agree balances out all the bad stuff I just said. <laughs> One does not undertake an experiment knowing one has failed. Can we get back to the rowing? I suggest you do. No, We're never going to get there. No, I mean I'd greatly appreciate it if you would assist. Perhaps you should ask him. I don't know what we were expecting from a man who sold his daughter, participated in the massacre at Wounded Knee, and who eats hot dogs out of the trash, but it turns out that Booker DeWitt is a bit of a bad egg. After freeing Elizabeth from the tower in which she's been imprisoned her entire life, Booker interrupts the first bit of fun she's had since she was born to lie to her about taking her to Paris. What could be better than this? How about Paris? Paris? How, I, I don't understand. How could we get there? That's where that airship's going, but if you want to stay and dance, we can... No, let's go! Come on, let's go! Come on, let's go right now! A plan that is only foiled because it turns out, uh-oh, that women are capable of learning geography. There's no one. Wait, what is that? 40 north by 74 west. That's not Paris, that's New York. How did you know that? One thing I had in that tower was time, Mr. DeWitt. Time to study things like geography. You should be ashamed of yourself, Booker. Get ready for the telling off of a lifetime. Hey, will you just turn around and talk to me and we <laughs> can... <laughs> or, wow. Okay, that works too, Elizabeth. Jeez. Mission reports are filed, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the Council? Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. Commander Shepard is a busy space commander, constantly having to deal with galaxy-wide threats, tricky diplomats, and angry alien husbands, so it's sort of understandable that he occasionally acts like a jackass. Sort of. When he's dealing with the Citadel Council, however, you'd expect Shepard to keep his cool. These are the guys who tasked him with tracking down Saren, and their support is going to be invaluable in future. So what does Shepard do? Spends the whole game hanging up on them. I don't need this. <laughs> Communications cut, Commander. Or at least he does whenever we're playing, because frankly, we're with Joker. Commander, is this some kind of game? Are you calling in a report just so you can cut us off again? You know it. That never gets old, does it? Okay, this time for real, Citadel Council. Do not cut me off like last time. I fail to find it amusing. Whoops. <laughs> you should have seen your faces. What's this? A map? Hmm, looks like only part of a map. I've got the rest of it right here. You know how it is, you're a pirate looking to defeat another pirate who is also an evil zombie, but you can't leave the island you're on because the guy whose ship you want to hire has lost his lucky necklace. We've all been there. What you probably wouldn't do is replace that necklace with the stolen monocle of the local cartographer, leaving him completely blind. I mean, that's just cruel. Well, that's why you're not the hero of Monkey Island 2, because that's exactly what Guybrush Threepwood does to poor Wally, leaving him at the mercy of thieves, cutthroats, and probably ghost pirates, I expect. Hey, where's my monocle? I can't see a thing without me monocle. Still, they meet up again later, so hopefully Guybrush can make it up to Wally then. Hey, watch it with a spit. Guybrush! Now it's time to see what's being said in the comments and by Duke Nukem in Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition. <coughs> Listen to me, kid. <coughs> you got banged up pretty bad. Doc put some robot shit in your brain. It's gonna be weird, but uh, suck it up. Still a charmer. 
First up this week, your comments on this video about the weird ways game developers try to stop unauthorised people from playing their games. Game Dev Tycoon was released without DRM, meaning there was a substantial chance that people were going to be playing it who shouldn't be. However, developer Greenheart had a surprise in store for those people. As ever, some good suggestions from you guys, such as this from Lemon Zeppelin, who says, No mention of Serious Sam 3. If you pirated that game, a giant pink human scorpion monster would chase you around forever until you died. And he's invincible. Fun times. I mean, that doesn't sound fun. I think they mean fun for the scorpion. Oh, OK. Meanwhile, commenter Hobgoblin99 writes in to complain. You guys left out Sonic 06. The pirated version of that game had weird glitches and terrible load times that pretty much stopped players from... What? You're saying that was the finished published game? Oh. Sorry to break it to you. You were bound to find out sooner or later. <laughs> It's a trick question because Clint Eastwood has never sung, ever, in his life. There's no such movie. Clint Eastwood has never sung a song called I Talk to the Trees. You're thinking of Pocahontas. On the subject of Clint Eastwood, Stephen Lehman writes to say, Unfortunately, yes, Clint Eastwood was in a musical and did sing that song. It's as bad as it sounds. Hey, it can't be that bad. I talk to the trees. Okay, moving on. Here are your comments on last week's show about Snake Pass and the video game Snake's less adorable than its snaky hero, Noodle. Unlike the 2D, no-colour, apple-eating snake sim on old-timey Nokia phones, Snake Pass is three-dimensional and more brightly coloured than a flock of peacocks sucked through a jet engine. Chris Miles here with the important questions, asking, does anyone have a spare peacock? On a related note, does someone else have a spare jet engine? I just want to check something. I'd recommend putting down some plastic sheeting first. I just finished paying for those carpets. Mm. Commenter the Rupert Littabin, meanwhile, has another unadorable snake to suggest, saying, uh, liquid snake? He's a snake and has a British accent. You can't get any worse. Ugh, right? Commenter Eric Hoss has cause for alarm, saying, notification squad? Does hand gestures successfully? Summons an imp? Well, that was unexpected. Ah, yeah, you're doing the imp summoning hand sign. The notification squad one's more like this. Oh. <laughs> it's an easy mistake to make. Finally this week, here are your comments on this video of Andy and I playing retro graphic adventure Thimbleweed Park. What's in the trash? In the trash. Ah. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. What happened? Oh, you got got by the what? scary red eye oh, monster. My God. Commenter Apex Penguin knows a good find when they see one, saying, Ooh, a box of mannequin parts in a dark alley. Dibs. <laughs> nuh -uh. I saw them first. Okay, uh, that is looking great. Yeah, Let's get out there and abuse that crowd. Ah, okay. You're all a bunch of inbred freaks. Yep, yeah. start strong. Insult their lineage, their family. Speaking of clowns, Max Littlewood submits the following joke. It's no wonder the clown is so stressed. His job is intense. I said his job is intense. I'm sorry, I'll leave. Yes, I think you'd better had. Lastly, commenter Rishith Sinha knows your secret, Mike, and says, 4.30, that's Mike in the background. Mike! Give it up, Sandy. Can I have some cherry pie? And also coffee. Real nice dining you got here. It's a shame if someone were to chainsaw it. clown. Look, what people do in their own time is up to them. I just happen to enjoy flipping burgers in point-and-click diners. All right, touchy. I'm going back to the studio, sit on the sofa. All right, I'm clocking off too to go to my night job. Ah, that's better. I'll have the pie. Coming right up, sugar. That's it for Show of the Week. Thanks for watching. But, uh-oh, an ancient curse will befall you. Oh, no, unless you press the like button. Press it 100 times or your feet will fall off. That seems like quite a high number of presses. Right, uh, press it 50 them. times yeah. or your whole lunch will taste of eucalyptus. It's still pretty Amazing. high. Just... Press it once or at some point today you will walk into a room and forget why you went in there. Chilling prospect. Thanks yeah. for watching. We'll see no you next time. That. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm just about ready for some lunch. Actually, okay. I, I bought something from home, so I'm just going to stay oh, okay, here. Okay, fine. I'll get burritos without you. Okay, bye. Bye, enjoy.